joined by an incredible contributor, not just to a single protocol, but to really most of the modern peer-to-peer -peer, uh, blockchain protocols that are out there due to his work on uh, libp2p and a whole bunch of other tools. And we're excited to hear from him directly in a second. Earl Kripalani is a tech lead at Protocol Labs, and he's going to be speaking about Test Ground, which is a platform and distributed systems at scale. Hey, Raul, how's it going? Awesome. So I'm just going to quickly share my screen because I do have a presentation. Uh, do, 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 block temporarily. What does this mean? All right. I think we're on now. All right. Okay. So thanks a lot for having me. Uh, it's great. It's great to be here. Uh, I mean, it's great that you organized this conference. Uh, Chainsafe is a great collaborator in all regards. Uh, I've worked with a bunch of chain safe people on a bunch of projects and it's always been a great experience. So it's great to see uh, CCON Zero and I uh, hope there are many more to come. Um, and I hope that everybody is safe wherever you are in the world, just take care of yourselves. All right, so today I wanna cover TestGround. Uh, TestGround is um, a platform that we developed at Protocol Labs because we needed it and um, we are it, we, we hope that a lot of people need it. And I think that a lot of people need this kind of testing. So, um, and a lot of projects in the space. So what I'm gonna cover today is, first of all, I'm gonna talk about what is TestGround, of course. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about how IPFS, Libby2B, Filecoin, and ResNet Lab, um, which, is, which stands for Resilient Networks Lab, uh, which is a practice here at PL Research, Protocol Labs Research, um, how they're using TestGround and what kind of projects we were able to land, particularly in 2020, as we created TestGround to be able to uh, work on those projects, to work on those protocol improvements that otherwise would have been impossible to ship, um, and how they achieve that. I'm also going to talk about how TestGround works. Um, I think a lot of people here would be interested in knowing kind of like the details um, of that. I'm going to cover the basic concepts today. And I'm also going to talk about our roadmap, what's next for, for TestGround. And I'll leave some room for Q&As, so uh, feel free to punch those in uh, as they arise. Awesome. So let's start. Uh, what is TestGround? TestGround is a platform for testing, benchmarking, and simulating distributed and peer-to-peer -peer systems at scale. It was born out of the IPFS and the B2B projects, but it is in no way um, restricted or dependent on IBFS and Libby2B. There is like literally zero imports of IBFS and Libby2B in TestGround. It was built from the ground up to be a completely independent project because we believe that a lot of projects in the space need the kind of reproducible testing and the kind of um, simulation that TestGround allows you to do. It's designed to be multilingual and it's runtime agnostic. And basically this means that uh, you can write TestGround test plans in any language uh, the platform will is able to deal with test plans written in any language. Right now, we have an SDK for Go. We are um, there's a there's work in progress for a JavaScript SDK, and we're really really keen to see a Rust SDK and um, and more more SDKs in other languages. Um, I'll talk about what the SDK is. It's a very lightweight component, so it's very easy to implement, and it's runtime agnostic. This means that. Um, you can run test plans. A single test plan written using the test run framework can be uh, run in your local machine uh, using executables. It can run in Docker containers, which give you nice features, as I'll discuss later. And also, um, in you can scale it out in a Kubernetes cluster um, of any size. Right now, we have tested up to 10,000 instances of a test plan. Cool. Uh, this is just kind of like to give it a little bit of, of, of movement. And so you can see kind of like what the heart of TestGround is. This is just kind of like a demo that's running a DHT test plan, I believe. Um, so when I say DHT test plan, it's a, it's a test plan that, that hits and targets the libby 2 DHT. Uh, and it tries to basically spin up. Uh, I think this plan is spinning up uh, 100 nodes. It is querying for all yeah, each node is querying for all others and it's expecting to find them in the DHT and then they're printing out a result and also the latency, right? So this is kind of like uh, what you see when you run a test run test plan uh, from the CLI. 
Now, why test runs? I've already kind of like given, given a few touches on this, but um, um, I think it's really important that I convey this, the motivation that led us to, to build test run in the first place. First of all, we all know that building distributed systems is hard and testing distributed systems is even harder. And what's even harder is like hard times, you know, 1 million is evolving decentralized systems, right? And especially decentralized systems that have, um, that have hundreds of thousands of users, right? And have node populations of those amounts, right? Because a single algorithmic change in a single place might be easy to reason about. It might be like, hey, it might look like the right thing to do, but getting from kind of like, this is the thing that, that we believe would be an improvement to confirming that that improvement is going to give the desired effects at the level of scale that a network could be running on, kind of like by the emergent effects of a single, you know, little change. Uh, that's the thing that makes these changes really reason, uh, really hard to reason about, right? Um, in general, I would say that IBFS and libby 2 b and if, if you hang out in kind of like, you know, all the communities of the projects that were sponsored by protocol labs or started by protocol labs, you will see that there is kind of like a, an orientation to data backed engineering, right? We like to make decisions based on data, right? And to make decisions based on data for protocols, we need reproducible tests, right? Because the test would need to like exercise a part of the code base and yield the same result everywhere, right? Because otherwise, you know, it's very hard to take decisions. And um, having that kind of tooling allows us to gain confidence in our changes. So there were many times, you know, during the history of these projects, of, of the projects that like Libby to be IBFS, that we wanted to make specific changes and they seemed like they would be the right thing to do, but there was kind of like a lot of analysis paralysis in, you know, the community and the team because it was a complex change and we didn't know what the impact could be. We couldn't like project the impact and simulate the impact on a network. So uh, having a platform like TestGround brings in rigor to the engineering process and to end. Um, and TestGround is really good at this because it supports various workflows. It supports continuous testing, um, things like comparative A-B testing, right? So if you wanna compare how uh, a given commit or a given release performs against another one, you can do that writing a single test plan. Uh, it supports backwards compatibility testing, iteration, prototyping, uh, and so on. For us, we truly believe that test ground has been a massive accelerator for kind of like the projects that we've been wanting to pursue and let to be an IPFS and Filecoin. Um, and also the decisions that we needed to make, uh, technical decisions when it came to the protocol. It has helped us validate ideas for drastic redesigns and, and improvements. And these are some of the things that it's help, helped us with. And we actually built test ground because we needed tooling to uh, to to address all these challenges and we couldn't find it anywhere. So we decided to build it for, for the community. Uh, one of the, the first projects that Tesla was used in was um, for the content routing and bit swap improvements that made it into IPFS 0 0.5. Now we know that the, if, you're, if you're familiar uh, with, um, with IPFS, you will know that the DHT and bit swap are critical components of, of, of IPFS, they're kind of like the heart of IPFS. The problem that we had is that the quality of the IPFS DHT had deteriorated. We had we had huge uh, node populations, um, and unfortunately, many of those nodes were sitting behind NATs and they were not dialable. So, but still, they wanted to participate in the DHT, and somehow they got records uh, placed on them. And also, the iteration logic needed some, some a bit of work. We had a lot of ideas, and literally, like we spent months discussing ideas, but. Honestly, it was like this. This was one of the examples of analysis paralysis. We were hesitant to touch, you know, these parts of, of the code base because they were really the key pieces of IPFS, and a wrong decision could have really bad effects on an already running network. So this is like kind of like the breaking point where we really decided to uh, to invest in in building out test ground. Uh, with for this project, we were able to spin up networks of up to one thousand nodes. Um, and also simulate NATs and many of the behaviors that we expect that we had seen in the wild that we wanted to that we wanted to correct the DHT to be tolerant to, right? Uh, so things that we did were build experiments. Uh, we measured the results. We iterated over and over again. There were like at least one thousand launches of test test uh, test runs. We compared results, verified backwards compatibility between one version and another, and then um, this helped us launch the thing. 
Now, a second project where test ground was uh, super useful was in, in testing the assumptions and testing the changes and the improvements that we wanted to make to Gossip Sub uh, to introduce the security hardening extensions. So if you're familiar with, um, with Filecoin and ETH2, for example, these two networks, the PubSub layer is powered by a protocol called Gossip Sub 1.1. And this is part of the lippy 2 p stack. Now, Gossip Sub 1.1, the, the idea and the design proposed introducing peer scoring, things like adaptive gossip dissemination, peer exchange, opportunistic grafting. You can read all about this in the spec. Uh, I'm not just coming up with fancy names. Uh, these are, uh, these are uh, really interesting mechanisms to make Gossip Sub 1.1 secure and attack resistance. So things that, we, things that we did with TestGround was simulate attacks. We simulated, we created attacks that we know were going to succeed against 1.0 and that we played them, played them against 1.1 um, and verified that the decisions we had made were the correct ones to deter those attacks. It also, Tesla also helped us to tune the parameters for, uh, for Filecoin. And really this project took test ground to a new level of scalability. To, uh, this project required running up to 10,000 nodes um, in, in a cluster, uh, according to a choreography and so on, to, um, to actually carry out the test plan, uh, the, the test logic. Each test run, just so you have an idea of the amount of um, data that it generated, it produced five gigs of raw data that we then analyzed through a Jupyter Notebooks integration. So basically, each node was reporting traces and traces and traces and, stat and stats. Uh, we, we ended up um, creating an integration with Jupyter Notebooks, which we want to, it's, it's open source, but we want to integrate it into, into test run proper. Um, as part of our roadmap. I'll talk about that later. But on the left, you can see a bunch of diagrams that were generated from, re from that uh, raw data uh, that was coming from test ground runs. And we ended up publishing a paper as well. So if you look it up, you can look up uh, Gossip Sub paper and, and you'll find it. Another project that test ground was super helpful uh, for was test Lotus stress testing. And not just stress testing, there was a bunch of testing, end-to-end -end testing, Themes that we were able to um, to address with with test ground. We spun up um, just before mainnet, the months before mainnet. We spun up a uh, tactical effort called Project Oni to build network validation tests very quickly. And things that we tested were deals, payment channels. I'm not I'm not sure how many people are familiar with Filecoin concepts, but uh, I, I just cite a few deals, payment channels, uh, chain sync, window posts. Um, we also tested DRAND unavailability and how the chain sync and the chain could cope with that. And what's nice is that this project actually catalyzed many improvements in TestGround itself. And these improvements are, of course, available for any user of TestGround. Now, TestGround uh, also has been helping. It's kind of like the main, one of the main research tools of the Brazilian Networks Lab practice here at Protocol Labs. Um, ResNet Lab is researching and prototyping and validating solutions for networking related challenges of IBFS and lib 2 b Then some of the recent efforts include testing steam, uh, stream compression algorithms and comparing them and benchmarking them and um, especially their integration with an IPFS and also leveraging some metadata and the bit swap layer, which is kind of like you can, you can think of it as the data sharing layer of, of, um, of IPFS, um, the data transmission layer. Um, uh, there's, there's a bunch of uh, chatter and gossip going on there. Um, nodes are broadcasting wants and haves and so on. And there was some information that we thought we could piggyback onto and leverage for higher efficiency. And uh, our researchers at ResNet Lab used TestGround to validate that. Now, enough about how TestGround has been beneficial to the users that have been using it so far. And of course, to this list, there are other users like query.io, for example, ETH2 has been experimenting with, um, with TestGround itself, with TestGround as well, and there's a bunch of other, other users as well. Um, I don't know the use cases very well, that's why I haven't covered them, but it's definitely worth uh, checking them out. Now, how does uh, TestGround proper work? I'm gonna go through kind of like a series of 10 steps. This is not like a logical flow. It's kind of like, um, it's not the way that you would do things in, in, in practice, but it's, kind of, it's a very nice logical flow to explain end-to-end -end how TestGround works. First of all, the, the first thing I want to cover is the programming model. Now, with TestGround, if, if you look at other 
testing efforts out there. They all focus on, okay, say we have Filecoin or a need to a client or something else. Um, I'm gonna, like those testing efforts, uh, those platforms tend to focus on let's deploy a thousand copies of the daemon itself and then let's puppeteer it from from a script right that is hitting the daemons in a particular order that is calling specific methods that is changing settings and so on the problem with that is that you're hitting the code that you want to test from the outside and the flexibility that you get with that approach is very very little um, and it's it's quite brittle with test ground you're actually uh, testing against the local, you're hitting the local APIs of the program or the application under test. So literally it's almost as if you're sitting inside, you're not remote controlling from the outside. And this is pretty cool because uh, it gives you the ability to, to tweak and fine tune parameters. Um, and it doesn't, uh, with the other approach, it would have to like expose every single thing that you wanted to configure in a test via an API, right? And that is very cumbersome, it's not safe, it like, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't yield very good velocity. With test ground, you, tests that are written for test ground are, tend to look like unit tests. They feel very natural. Now, on top of kind of like this unit test, what you do is you overlay a coordination. You overlay some coordination logic, right? And you coordinate instances via a Redis back sync service API. So it's super simple. Very simple. It has two primitives essentially that unlock a lot of. Uh, distribu distributed coordination patterns that you can that you can build, like atomic sequences, locks, and um, and sharding, and leader election, and a bunch of things, right? So basically, you can you have built your test plan, um, you have built the logic of the test plan, and now you want to wait at specific places for in for certain instances to do something, or you want to share data. Like for example, you know, in a libp 2 p test plan, you could start a libp 2 p host, and then you want to share the multi-adders, for example, the listening addresses, so that other peers can connect to you. Well, this is is what the what the coordination and sync service is um, is um, is meant to do. Now, these two things give rise to the programming model of of test ground, which is essentially test plans are a distributed state machine. So there is no special conductor instance that is telling instances that is telling all other instances what to do. The choreography emerges from itself via this distribu distributed uh, distributed coordination um, idea. This makes plans extremely robust and reproducible, and especially not subject to to a single point of failure. Right, the coordinator. So it's almost like like your entire test plan is a distributed state machine. Now, um, something that you can do within test plans is um, is setting network traffic shaping shaping policies. So this is super important for testing protocols, right? You want to be able to test um, as different different network configurations, and you want to be able to test latencies, jitter, corruption, packet loss, uh, whether a peer is connected and disconnected, intermittent connections. Like all these things are pretty important to test the robustness of, of a protocol, right? And of the implementation of that protocol. So this is a first class citizen in in uh, in test ground and the API, all the examples that I'm posting that I'm that I'm kind of like capturing here in, in these screenshots are uh, Go examples. But we're working on the community is working on a, on a JS uh, SDK. And uh, of course, if, if you want to work on a Rust SDK or something like that, just just get in touch. Of course, network traffic shaping policies can change during the test. So if you combine this with a, with a choreography aspect, it gives rise to a very powerful combination where uh, nodes can coordinate to change um, their network um, configuration or to change their network behavior, right? The network link, the, the characteristics and the quality of service of the network link. So you can simulate things like, for example, a given node having a brittle connection going and in, in, in coming, um, having a very, a very high variance of latency and things like that. And you can coordinate how those things change across the cohort of instances via the sync service. Now, um, another thing that you can do with test ground is you can configure the test plan to have a bunch of parameters, right? And then you can launch groups of instances and you can specify how many instances are gonna are gonna launch with each parameter configuration and this is super cool because it allows you to like in in a single test plan combine instances that are gonna have different behavior right like for example um, uh, fast and slow groups 
with high and slow, uh, high and, and low latencies, or uh, nodes with a cache, nodes without a cache, and so on. And what's interesting is that you're at the end of the test, the test outputs are categorized by group, and all the metrics as well that we publish, I'm going to talk about that in a second, are also tagged with a with a group. So you can tell um, what groups produce which uh, which results. Now another thing that that we needed uh, was to be able to pitch a bunch of uh, versions of the same uh, code together and see how it how it behaves, right? So this can be this 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 feature is what I'm calling multi multi version tests, um, and it allows you to in a single it allows you to do two things. In a single test run, you can combine instances of uh, say for example DHT one and DHT two, right? In a single test run, uh, to test compatibility protocol compatibility between those instances, because we all know that like, it's a very desired property of protocol evolution is to have backwards compatibility, right? And it's it's very hard in practice to test things, right? So uh, test run allows you to do that. Another thing that you could do as well is do comparative testing. So you don't merge the, um, in a single test run, you don't merge a cohort with a version and a cohort with another version. You just run a single version, um, run and another single version run and then compare the results, right? Now, one thing with uh, API evolution is that it might break between versions. So if you have a single test plan that is targeting two different versions of the same API, well, if the API changes, then it's not going to compile for one of those versions, right? So what TestGround allows you to do is to set selectors, which um, basically select the files to compile for each uh, group. And in the case of the, the Go uh, builder, this is implemented by using, uh, by using uh, build tags. Yeah. So that allows you to like create shims and, and a bunch of things. Now, of course, uh, you wanna, like your test plans are gonna be doing something. Are they gonna be, a, rec they're gonna be recording data points. They wanna record data points and metrics and so on. So the test ground SDK already offers you all these capabilities and everything that uh, so when you record a metric, when you record a status, you can also, uh, everything is output in files and also uh, to to InfluxDB, which I'll talk about that in, in a second. And also you can emit um, you can emit assets. So you can emit like raw data and dumps and logs and so on. Now, another thing is that um, you, yeah, so so you can build and run the test plan. Uh, basically you do that by by creating a, tom a TOML configuration and you submit it to test run via command. It's very simple. Test is a, is a is a client and daemon architecture. So there are, TestGround has a bunch of runners and builders. Uh, these are the things that compile a test plan and the things that run a test plan. And the one key feature that I really wanted to implement in TestGround was um, this isomorphic, the concept of isomorphic test plans. So the ability for a single test plan to run in different environments because there are different stages of development of a test plan where you require quick, fee quick feedback, which is uh, usually the opposite of launching at scale. So if you want to run, if you want to build a test plan um, that ultimately targets like 10, 10k, um, 10k instances, you're not gonna you're not gonna run it the first. Like while you're developing every single iteration, you don't want to have to submit it to the Kubernetes because that creates a lot of latency in that feedback developer feedback cycle. So we created the system of a modular builders and runners where a single test plan, you can build it into an executable and run it locally, you can, which gives you a very quick uh, feedback, uh, feedback loop. And it's really good for rapid iteration and for the actual development of the test plan. And when you're ready to promote it and to like start testing it at larger scales, you can build it into a Docker container, and then you can use the local Docker runner to run it locally, or you can submit it to a cluster. And we provide to a Kubernetes cluster. And by the way, we provide uh, all the playbooks and the scripts in the repo to instantiate a test ground cluster on AWS. So of course, I've, I've been talking about how instances produce results and record points and record observations and so on, um, you want to analyze those points, right? So automatically TestGround publishes all the, the SDK publishes uh, all those outputs into InfluxDB and then you can connect something like um, Chronograph or Grafana and explore, explore that. Um, at last, 
you also want to be able to, so if your test ground is emitting uh, assets, uh, your test ground test plan is emitting assets, like for example, files or dumps or logs or whatever, you want to be able to collect them. So we provide a command where, you know, after the test plan is run, you uh, can collect all of the assets that are duly categorized by group and container and so on and process them via processing scripts or just like, throw them manually. All right, so I covered kind of like the end, uh, end to end of TestGround. I could like talk about TestGround for, for an hour, um, but, but yeah, we don't have that time. Uh, you can check out the docs, docs.testground.ai is, uh, we put a lot of love into the docs. Uh, so definitely check them out. I think, um, and I think they are, they explain very well many of these, like how to develop with TestGround. If you notice, you know, opportunities for improvement, just, uh, just let us know. Now, what is next? Um, let's create some excitement here. <laughs> there's, a, there's a cat being launched into, into space. I think it's a cat. I don't know what it is. Or an owl. I don't know. Anyway, uh, TestGround as a service. So TestGround um, started being an interactive thing where you have a daemon running, you have a backing Kubernetes cluster maybe, and you submit jobs to it manually. Now, uh, we want an automated workflow for uh, continuous integration to integrate with continuous integration. And also because it um, it is it allows us to, it, it, like it's this really nice place where you could archive the history of a test plan and all the runs it has, associating it with a branch, with a commit, with a bunch of things, and then you can explore uh, the evolution of that part of the code base. Um, as measured by the test plan, right? So it, this is really nice to have because it allows you to detect regressions and improvements very quickly, right? So if you have like our holy grail is to have basically um, it, like this is kind of like the initial vision of test plan, right? And we've had to like lay every brick before we could like get to the get to the ceiling, uh, get to the roof. This is kind of like uh, the place where we wanted to reach, which is uh, we want to have the uh, a daemon or a service that's running automatically and um, testing a work code consistently in large clusters at different levels of, of scalability and reporting back the results and the observations, right? So we can detect regressions very rapidly and this like feeds back into, into the velocity that you can achieve in your project, right? Because you can keep pushing and rely on a tool that, that will tell you if you've broken something um, at a large scale, not obviously in a unit test, we already have that, right? All right, um, and as I said earlier, one of the projects, which was the Gossip Sub project, developed an integration between TestGround and Jupyter Notebooks, which allows you to basically configure, set all the configuration parameters for a test plan, launch it to TestGround, and then get the results and analyze them. It's kind of like this unified workbench, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and we want to integrate this into, into TestGround itself uh, so that all users can benefit from it. Now there, here are a few resources, and then we can move to questions and answers if we have question if we have time. Don't know since I don't know if we I think we're running late. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, we there have is, time, and we're gonna we we're gonna grow to the the top two questions. So yeah, please go keep okay. going. Awesome. Yeah. So I'll just wrap up here Absolutely. with kind of like some some resources. Um, if you if you're curious about kind of like the motivation and um, and kind of like getting the story and also understanding once again what test ground what test ground is and looking at it um, in your own time, then definitely read read the launch post. Uh, we launched test ground and we made a GA general availability so to speak or kind of like you know the, the first proper release of test ground, not a pre-release in May um, earlier this year and that is uh, that is the the post. Um, definitely read that. I already mentioned it earlier. If you want to take a look at, at docs and dig into dig into stuff uh, with um, uh, dig a little bit more, then take a look at the docs website. Um, of course, if you're interested in test ground, we always welcome contributions. Um, we are a very open community, and definitely would uh, welcome you taking it up for a spin um, and also putting a star if you want, forking it and playing playing with it and submitting submitting issues and pull requests. Um, just to sum up, uh, how to get started with TestGround, read the README. <laughs> um, definitely take a look at the docs, uh, start at the get, getting started section. And personally, I recommend that for an initial first test plan, you take a look at the ping, at the libp2p ping test plan, because um, 
I wrote it a few months ago when I needed to do another demo and it's, and I made that test plan didactic, right? Um, with a lot of comments that explains step by step what's happening and the reason and why, and uh, it provides a lot more cross links to a lot more resources. Cool. All right. So there are my contact details in case you wanna you wanna reach me. Um, and let's go. Let's move to the questions and answers uh, section. All right. Awesome. Yeah. So how does, first of all, thank you. I don't want to rush too, too fast. Thank you so much for this awesome presentation. I think Eric said it best that uh, in, in the chat that basically, where is it? Where is it? I love how protocol labs build something specific and oh, and always somehow invent something else along the way. But, you know, absolutely appreciative of everything that you're doing. It's, so incredible and something that you yeah. know so many different projects are going to be able to take advantage of um, in their scaling. So yeah, let me uh, let me get to these questions. So how does this compare to other distributed systems testing frameworks like Jepson? Yeah, so I think um, I'm not super familiar with Jepson because it didn't like come in my radar when I did the research. Uh, it came after, and I haven't had the time to like properly dig into it. But from what I've what I understand, it is meant to test. It is oriented towards security and safety testing, right? Um, not so much like it's it's good. It's good to kind of like take a single node and um, hit it with a bunch of vectors and a bunch of inputs and verify what the results are. What we're looking for with test ground was to conduct um, real world uh, scenarios, right? Uh, which is, hey, we know there are these conditions that are impossible to simulate um, in our network, or there's going to be these conditions, like, for example, you know, a DRAND availability in Filecoin, for example. How is this? Like, we expect that it's going to impact the chain and sync in this particular manner, but we want to be 100% confident. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of like getting in engineering, getting to that point of confidence um, is the thing that that especially when you when when you're working with decentralized systems, which you don't control, whose deployment you don't control. You want to make sure that the code that you've put out there um, is is um, is good because you, you don't control when others are going to upgrade. Right. So definitely that is the thing that gives us more confidence. Absolutely. I think people don't really appreciate how much, you know, also that, that confidence side of things really plays a big role because at the end of the day, you know, traditional test suites don't actually give you that confidence, but they do give you kind of at least a checked box. So to have things like this to take it to the next level um, yes. is vital to being able to roll out new innovations as they come along. So for our next question, uh, sounds like this can be used to test out ideas, IPFS, but it can also test a heterogeneous network. So an IPFS network with Go nodes, and Rust nodes, and JS nodes. If so, how has that been done? And I think this is relevant to our next question too, which is that you said that there's an SDK for Go and one in the works for JS. However, you also said that it's language agnostic. Mm -hmm. How do you use this for other languages if there is no SDK? Those are, those are really, really good questions. So I'll start with the, with the first one. Um, yes, this is totally in the roadmap. We like one one goal of TestCon is to enable interoperability testing at scale. Um, so this is uh, this is definitely on the roadmap. The idea is that really. So I didn't talk about that. I didn't talk about this, but a test ground test plan has a contract and it receives a formal runtime environment, which is in the form of of um, of environment variables. That's what it is, right? It's like uh, basically a, a program that receives environment variables and does a bunch of things with them, right? Uh, one of those environment variables is a URL to the sync service, and another one is a URL to the influx CV, right? And like all these things then are built as um, inside the SDK, which is a very lightweight thing, which is just providing a nice API to interact with a sync service in the semantics that that it needs, um, and as well with InfluxDB in the semantics that then other tooling can you know process information information on. So if all these SDKs are following the formal runtime the formal runtime environment of the contract, 
then all of them are automatically interoperable, right? The, the instances, the test instances in one language are interoperable with the test instances written in another language. You, of course, need to replicate the logic of the test plan um, across that, but that, that's what you do in interoperability testing anyway. And uh, for the last question, there's an SDK for Go and one in the works for JS. Uh, yeah, it's language agnostic. How do you use this for other languages if there's no SDK? Right, so uh, the SDK is sugar, right? The SDK uh, provides you with uh, the, the features, the user-facing features that you that you would benefit from to inter by uh, for interacting with, with test ground and other instances. So there is, I think there is a Docker. I didn't talk about that. I didn't cover it. I think there is a Docker generic builder that basically puts the logic on you to generate um, to write a test plan. With you could write it without an SDK if you wanted to in the language that you want, as long as you provide a Docker file that has an entry point. Uh, that is the only thing that test run needs to then be able to schedule that that test plan, right? Um, now, of course, it's not going to do anything if 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 it's not using the SDK. It's not interesting at all, right? Because it won't be able to interact with other instances via the sync service, or it won't publish any metrics or anything like that. And that's the, where the SDK comes in. So really, you can build. Um, uh, test instances in any language, but of course the SDK is use, is a useful thing to have to to have your test plan do interesting things. Awesome, awesome, really great, really great answers. Um, I hope that that answers everything to the people who did ask those questions. Um, yeah, I know. If not, you can contact me on on Twitter, or uh, we are one of the few privileged users that have GitHub discussions on the test ground repo. So you can definitely open a discussion uh, there if you want. Amazing. I think it's, it's still in beta. Amazing. So thank you again, Raul. I'm really excited. I feel like a year ago, we were at DevCon just over a year ago. Um, and here we are a year later. And so excited to see a year from now where we'll be with this incredible project and all the chains that we'll be using and all the projects that we'll be using test ground moving forward. So thank you so much for sharing this with us. To all those on YouTube uh, listening, yeah, please do check it out um, and share this with your friends because it's incredible work that's being done by our friends at Protocol Labs. So thank you so much for joining us and we're really excited to, to follow up with how everything goes. Thanks a lot for having me and great work. See ya. Bye, see ya, Thanks again. <laughs>